Hello, boys and girls. Here we are, Chapter 2 of Alibaba. Today, we're going to be working on opposites or antonyms. Antonyms are words with opposite meanings. Draw a line from each word in column A to its antonym in column B. Then use the words in column A, these words right here, to fill in the blanks in the sentences below. All right, so a basement. What would be the opposite of basement? A basement is downstairs. Well, an addict is upstairs. Dim. Think about a light. If a light is dim, it doesn't have very uh, much light. So the opposite would be bright. If something is damp, damp means that it's, you know, wet. So the opposite would be dry. A hero is someone who does something important and does good things. So the opposite would be a villain, someone who does naughty things. All right, so next one, lure. One meaning for lure could be if I lure you here, I tell you to come here. So <clears throat> the opposite would be to repel, to go against. And then our last word is reluctant. If you're reluctant to do something, you don't want to do it. Like you might be reluctant to do your work, but you better be. So the opposite of reluctant is eager. All right, so go ahead and use the words in column A to help you with these words to, or to fill in the blanks down here. All right. Now you have to answer both of these questions because there's only two of them. What did Ollie or what did David complain about even after he changed his name to Alibaba? So you would start with David. David complained about and then blah 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 even after he changed his name to Alibaba. So after about is where you're going to put your answer. David complained about blah, 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 even after he changed his name to Alibaba. How did Alibaba find the hidden treasure? Why didn't he tell his mother what he found? So two parts. How did Alibaba find the hidden treasure? Alibaba, instead of find, we have to put found, Alibaba found the hidden treasure by, so that's one part, and why didn't he tell his mother? Well, you're going to start with, he didn't tell his mother what he had found because, and then your answer. All right. And remember, you have to answer both of them and fill in these. All right, get your book out so you can follow along with me. Alibaba and the Secret Treasure. The first, the first Alibaba, the one Alibaba Berenstein had read about in his library book, found a robber's treasure. He knew the magic words to open a secret cave, and he knew how to trick the wicked robbers. Remember, he got the name from that book he read in the first chapter. And who's telling this story? Is Alibaba telling it? Nope, the author is telling it. Nothing like that ever happened to Alibaba Berenstein. Five days a week, he went to school. Third grade was not very different from second grade, even if the work was a little harder. 
The kids were the same, and the games they played at recess or in Fazed, like Fayed, were about the same too. Sometimes on the weekends, Alibaba rode the subway to his grandparents' house. As the train rumbled along and the lights in the dark tunnel flickered on and off, Alibaba would pretend the train had crossed onto a secret track. Maybe they were all heading to a mysterious cave deep underground where robbers had hidden gold and jewels. The speeding train would begin to slow down as it approached a station. Alibaba hoped it would be a station where no train had ever stopped before. But then he looked out the train window. The sign read 66th Street, where his grandparents lived. I thought having a name like Alibaba would make things pick up around here, Alibaba complained to his mother, but I still keep doing David sort of things. So he wanted his life to be adventurous now that he had a cool name like Alibaba, but that wasn't happening. Changing your name won't make your life any different, Mrs. Berenstein said. It won't make you grow up faster. This year you can... This year, you can cross Broadway by yourself, his mother reminded him. You can walk to Roger Zucker's house all alone. Last year, you thought that was a big deal. It was true. A year ago, crossing Broadway, a two-way street with lots of traffic, had seemed like a big adventure. Now that he could actually do it, Alibaba longed for bigger adventures than just crossing the street. One Saturday morning, when Alibaba Berenstein was eight years, six months, and 23 days old, his mother asked him to help her carry the laundry down to the basement of their apartment building to the down to the basement of their apartment building where there were washing machines and dryers. Mrs. Berenstein began to load two of the machines with laundry, but she realized that she'd forgotten the detergent. David, will you watch our laundry while I go get the soap? My name is Alibaba, he corrected her. Don't worry about the laundry. Who in the world would want to steal their dirty laundry? Mrs. Berenstein went to the elevator and Alibaba sat down near the washing machines. But after a moment or two, he got up and started to look around. The dim, slightly damp basement was a little like a cave, he thought. In one corner of the basement was the furnace that heated the building during the winter and made the hot water. Alibaba could hear the furnace's motor and the whole area around it was hot. It didn't exactly frighten him, but he decided he would rather explore another part of the basement instead. This was where people in the building stored their old furniture, bikes, baby carriages, suitcases, and anything else that they didn't need but didn't want to get rid of. The storage area was divided into cages with heavy mesh wiring between each cage. Alibaba had been inside the cage where the Berenstains kept their cast-offs, meaning the stuff they didn't really want in their apartment. He peeked in now and tried, to, and tried the door to the cage, but it was locked. Through the wire mesh, he could see his old tricycle from when he was little, and even his crib, which stood in pieces leaning against someone else's table. Alibaba walked down the row of cages, trying each door as he went past. He didn't expect any of the doors to open, but he tried anyway. At the very end of the row, he found one door that was unlocked. He went inside. Do you think that's a good idea, going into someone else's stuff? Mm -mm. There were old chairs covered with dusty velvet and three big old-fashioned trunks, like the ones Alibaba had seen in movies. He didn't know anyone who owned anything like, like them. It didn't seem like snooping to open them, especially when the lid on the trunks lifted so easily. Alibaba wrinkled his nose at the odor of mothballs. The first two trunks contained old clothing. He almost didn't want he almost didn't open the third trunk, but he knew the first 
Ali Baba would never leave a trunk unopened, so he decided to take a peek. Even in the dim light, he had no trouble seeing what was in the third trunk. It was filled with sparkling diamonds, rubies, pearls, and gold chains. Ali Baba could hardly believe his eyes. He closed the lid and read the label with the owner's name, Viv Vivaldi. Who is that? David, David, a voice called. It was his mother returning to the basement with the soap. Ali Baba was so stunned by what he had found in the third trunk that he didn't even correct her when she used his old name. All he could think about was the jewels. He was about to tell his mother everything, but he stopped just in time. She might say that he had no business poking into other people's trunks. At lunchtime, Ali Baba was still wondering about the jewels. Why would anyone keep a treasure in the basement? It must be that the owner of the jewels did not want anyone to find them inside his apartment. The more he thought about it, the more certain he was that he had stumbled on a stolen treasure. You think it's a stolen treasure? I don't know. He wished he could he wished he could talk about this with his friend Roger Zucker. Maybe the two of them could solve the mystery together. Unfortunately, Roger and his family had gone away for the weekend. Ali Baba would have to get to the bottom of this mystery by himself. He would make sure the jewels were returned to their rightful owner. He would be a hero, just like the first Ali Baba. After lunch, Ali Baba's mother asked him to go get the mail. Although there was, there was rarely any mail for him, this was a chore Ali Baba enjoyed. Today he studied all the names on all the other mailboxes in the lobby. Box 4K was labeled Vivaldi. There was no question about it. The thief lived right in this building. Did you ever hear the name Vivaldi? Alibaba asked his parents when he returned with the mail. Of course, said his mother. He's an Italian composer of Barco music. Does he have a police record? asked Alibaba. Not that I know of. He's been dead at least 200 years. I don't think we're talking about the same man, said Alibaba. The jewels in the basement couldn't have been there that long. The building was only 50 years old. There's someone named Viv Vivaldi living in this building, said Mr. Berenstein, looking up from the letter he was reading. I met him at a tenants meeting. He was worried that he wouldn't be able to buy his apartment if our building was turned into a co-op. I told him that as a senior citizen, he couldn't be evicted, meaning kicked out. A thief should be evicted, Alibaba thought darkly, but he didn't say anything. That afternoon, Mrs. Berenstein sent Alibaba to the store on the corner. She needed eggs for a recipe she wanted to try. Alibaba was glad to go. On the way back, he could check up on Mr. Vivaldi, Alibaba rode the elevator down to the street and rushed to get the eggs. When he returned to the building, he got off the elevator at the fourth floor. Even as he was coming out of the elevator, Alibaba could hear a woman screaming. As he approached the door of 4K, he heard the woman's scream come from inside the apartment. Alibaba stood frozen. Did Mr. Vivaldi lure women with jewels into his apartment and rob them? The woman screamed again. Why couldn't any of Mr. Vivaldi's neighbors hear her? The woman shrieked louder. Without thinking, Alibaba banged on Mr. Vivaldi's door. He didn't have any weapons on him. All he had was a dozen eggs. If he had to, he could throw them at Mr. Vivaldi. You think that was a good door or a good idea for Alibaba to do that? I don't know. Open the door, shouted Alibaba. Slowly, the apartment door opened. 
Alibaba was about to rush inside, but one look at the man in the doorway stopped him. He had on a helmet, but it didn't look like the kind of football kind football players wore. He was holding a shield, and there was a sword hanging from his waist. The woman shrieked again. Alibaba remembered why he was there. I'll save you, Alibaba cried and pushed his way into the apartment. He could hear the woman, but he could not see the see her. Where did you hide her? Alibaba demanded. He pulled the carton of eggs out of the paper bag. If Mr. Vivaldi drew his sword, he would throw it in his face. Is she in the bathroom? What's wrong with you, young man? asked Mr. Vivaldi. What's wrong with me? Alibaba said. You're the one who steals women, women's jewels. Shame on you. You should be in jail. Mr. Vivaldi walked over to his phonograph and turned it off. So a phonograph is like a record player, which you probably don't know anything about. Think of it as a modern day CD player. Suddenly, the room was quiet. There was no more shrieking. Who are you? asked the man. Will you please tell me what this is all about? Alibaba held a carton of eggs ready, just in case. I heard a woman screaming in there, he said. I want to know where she is. I think you mean Norma, said the man. Aha, said Alibaba. I knew it. Don't try any of your tricks. Norma is the name of an opera. The role was sung by Maria Callas. Maria, echoed Alibaba. How many women do you have stashed in this apartment? Alice, sighed Mr. Vivaldi. Maria Callas is dead. It is a great loss to the world. You should have thought of that before you killed her, Alibaba said. Don't make a move or I'll throw these eggs at you. I'm going to call the police. Alibaba edged toward the telephone. He remembered that the number for emergencies was 911. I didn't kill her, said Mr. Vivaldi. That was a role I never got. Then who died? demanded Alibaba. Do you have an accomplice? An accomplice? And where did you get all those jewels I saw in the basement? Mr. Vivaldi sat down on his sofa. I'm sorry. I think there has been a misunderstanding, he said. It's too late for excuses, Mr. Vivaldi. Please, the man said, put down those eggs before you drop them on my carpet. I'll tell you everything. Reluctantly, Alibaba put down the eggs. If Mr. Vivaldi lunged forward with his sword, Alibaba would have to move very quickly. For many years, I sang with the opera, said Mr. Vivaldi. I had many fine roles. Now I'm too old to sing on stage, but I still listen to my opera on the phonograph. I like to pretend that I'm singing before an audience. That's why I've kept my old costumes. So Mr. Vivaldi used to be an actor, or he used to sing on stage. I didn't think you bought that outfit at a department store, said Alibaba. Mr. Vivaldi smiled. You heard me playing the opera Norma. To you, I guess it did sound like someone screaming. But when you actually heard, but what you actually heard was the voice of Maria Callas. The one who's dead? asked Alibaba. Mr. Vivaldi nodded. Then there aren't any women in the apartment with you? Alibaba, Alibaba didn't know if he was relieved or disappointed. That is correct, young man. But what about the jewels? asked Alibaba. I saw them with my own eyes in the trunk in the basement. Who did you steal them from? I think you are referring to the fake jewelry we used on, on the stage, said Mr. Vivaldi. Alice, none of it is worth a penny. You mean those aren't real diamonds and rubies? Mr. Vivaldi shook his head. Gee, said Alibaba, I never saw so many jewels before. I was sure you were a robber. He looked the old man straight in the eye. Are you sure you aren't lying to me? 
Young man, said Mr. Vivaldi, you flatter me. Imagine thinking I was young enough to be a jewel thief. You make me feel 70 again, and I am going to be 83 on my next birthday. Gee, said Alibaba, that's really old. So it is, said Mr. Vivaldi. How old are you? Eight years, six months, and 23 days, said Alibaba. That's a good age, said Mr. Vivaldi. What is your name? You never told me. Alibaba, Alibaba Berenstein. Interesting name. Well, Alibaba, now that we are properly introduced, come another day if you would like. We can listen to Carmen together. Alibaba got ready to leave. He knew his mother would be wondering where he was. As he waited for the elevator, Alibaba could hear the phonograph playing again in apartment 4K. This time, a man was singing. Alibaba wondered if that was the way Mr. Vivaldi used to sound. He stood listening to the music until the elevator came. So that was a little adventure for Alibaba, thinking he had a jewel thief in the apartment building. All right, go ahead and answer your questions. Fill in the blanks, and we'll see you tomorrow for Chapter 3, Alibaba and the 40 Sleeves. Bye!